my dear students welcome you back in my geography class today we are going to start with a new topic for class 11 from the chapter interior of the earth so what we will read today today we will know about the shadow zone of the earthquake in the last video we discussed about earthquake like what is earthquake we discussed about the causes of earthquake and we also discussed about the seismic waves and their characteristics so before knowing about the shadow zone of earthquake, let us know the basic characteristics of the waves. Let us know some important points about the waves. What are waves? Waves means what? Energy traveling through a medium or material now the waves travel through a single material material at constant velocity now this velocity changes when when the wave travels through different medium or materials so the velocity changes when wave travels through different medium or materials. What happens when the wave travels through different materials? When the waves comes in contact at the boundary when the medium changes then the waves will either refract or reflect or maybe both what is refract refract means bending of and reflect means to bounce So when the waves come in contact at the boundary, when the media changes, I mean the medium changes, then the waves will either refract or reflect or it can be both, both reflection and refraction together. Now why we are reading the characteristics of the waves? Because it is very important to understand the movement of the waves that how the velocity of wave changes as it crosses the boundary as it moves from one material to another material. Normally in case of the movement of the waves when the waves move from higher density to lower density in that case it will lead to refraction towards the normal and in case of movement from lower density to higher density it will lead to refraction away from the normal so for earth, if the density of materials are increasing at a uniform rate, then as it is going deeper, the waves, it should be in a straight line. But it is not in straight line. The movement of waves are not in a straight line. We can see that there is a curve in the movement of the 
waves this is reflecting that our earth is not made up of uniform materials density temperature the mineral composition all are different and we can all understand this with the help of the movement of the waves that is p waves and s waves now when we say that when the waves come in contact at the boundary that means at the boundary the velocity is changing why the velocity is changing as i said velocity changes when the waves travel through different meat materials so here it is my solid and here it is liquid so as the waves are changing their medium here at this boundary we will see that there is a change in the velocity there is a change in the seismic velocity because we are talking about the seismic waves so here the seismic velocity changes across this boundary and we call this as a seismic this continuity here as we are talking about the seismic discontinuity all of you have heard about the mohos discontinuity the conrad discontinuity so what happens here across the border when the seismic waves this is the general characteristic of the waves that when they will move through one material to another material here across the boundary there will be a change in the seismic velocity and that is referred as seismic discontinuity and on this basis of seismic velocity we will see that the speed of the p waves and s waves are also changing we will also notice that there are certain areas where p waves cannot reach and there are certain areas where s waves cannot reach and th those are termed as the shadow zones so now let us understand what do you mean by shadow zones and what is the need of this shadow zones the earthquake waves get recorded in seismograph located at far off locations that means for example this is a part of earth where we are showing the crust core and mantle here we can see that this earthquake waves cannot reach some of the places that means in some of the places these earthquake waves are not getting recorded and this places referred as the shadow zone of the earthquake waves so what do you mean by shadow zone shadow zone is referred as shadow zone a seismic shadow zone is an area of the earth surface where the seismograph can barely detect any earthquake after the passing of seismic waves which have passed through the earth 
So what is a shadow zone? A seismic shadow zone is an area on the Earth's surface where the seismograph can barely detect any earthquake after the passing of seismic waves which have passed through the Earth. We can say that it is an area from angle distance between 105 degree to 145 degree. This is referred as the shadow zone. Now let us see the shadow zone of P waves and S waves. As we all know that P waves can travel through all medium, solid, liquid and gaseous. Now let us see the shadow zone of P waves and S waves. I will show the P waves with the help of the green color. Here is the epicenter. Now, how the P waves travel? The P waves travel parallel to the direction of propagation. And we know that P waves can travel through all medium. This is the crust. P waves can travel along all the medium, this we know. This is the liquid core, that means the outer core and, and this is the inner core and here is the mantle. Now here we will notice that P waves will refract. Why the P waves will refract and it will not be able to reach this particular portion. We know that the P waves can travel through all medium. But as I said that as why it will refract because here there is a change in velocity. There the velocity of the wave will change. In the mantle, when it will reach the mantle, there in the boundary, when it is moving from a solid and it is moving to a semi-molten state, there the velocity changes. So due to the change of velocity, we can see this is the area where P wave cannot reach. That means this is the area where the seismograph cannot detect any earthquake, whereas already the P waves have passed through this portion of the earth, right? So that means this is the zone a shadow zone of P waves where the seismograph cannot detect any earthquake because here we will see that due to the refraction the waves are refracted and here it cannot reach it is between 105 degree to 145 degree so this is the shadow zone of the P waves. Now coming to S waves, I will show the S waves with the help of the red color. Now we know the movement of S waves is shear or transverse movement. That means they move perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So here we can see that the S waves, they will move perpendicular to the direction of propagation. As we know that S waves cannot move through any other medium except solid. So we will see that Beyond 105 degree, we cannot see any S waves. That means we cannot record S waves beyond 105 degree. Here the S waves have reflected back, reflected to the surface. And here 
the P waves have refracted. So refraction and reflection. Refraction means bending. Reflection means to bounce off. So here the S waves have reflected. And beyond 105 degree, we cannot record the S waves. That means S waves are not fine after 105 degree. So this whole portion is the shadow zone of S waves that is beyond 105 degree we cannot detect movement of S waves so this represents the shadow zone of P waves and the shadow zone of S waves so we can say that a zone between 105 degree to 145 degree from the epicenter forms the shadow zone for both the waves. The zone beyond 105 degree does not receive the S waves and the entire shadow zone of P waves appears as a band around the earth between 105 degree to 145 degree. So what we can say is that the zone beyond 105 degree that is from the epicenter it does not receive the S waves whereas the entire shadow zone of P waves it appears as a band around the earth between 105 degree to 145 degree. So we can say that the shadow zone of S waves is much larger than the P waves. Now let us know that what is the importance of this shadow zone? Importance of shadow zone. First, importance is that the shadow zone of P and S waves provide boundaries for calculating the size of the core. It helps us to know the diameter of the core. The time arrival of P waves also helps to know about the density of the coal. And the most important is that we can see that from the lack of S waves We can see that beyond 105 degree, the S waves are not recorded. That means from the lack of S waves, we know that S waves can only travel through solid material and great slow in velocity of P waves. I've already told you that as they changes material, the waves changes material, the velocity changes. 
So the P waves, when it was moving through a solid material and then at the material chain, that is from solid to liquid, we have seen that the velocity has reduced. And as this velocity has reduced, it has led to refraction. So this proves, this shows that the outer core is liquid in nature. So these are the importance of the shadow zone. It provides boundaries for calculating the size of the core, the diameter of the core, the time arrival of P wave also help to know about the density of the core and from the lack of the S waves and great slow in velocity of P waves, this shows that the outer core is liquid in nature. So what we have learned in this video in this video, we have learned about the shadow zone, which gives evidence that outer core is liquid in nature, which helps to know about density, about the diameter, the size of the core. I hope all of you understood it very well. Here we have discussed about the shadow zone of P waves and the S waves and also the characteristics of the waves. So what we have learned today, Today, we have learned about a very interesting fact that is about the shadow zones, the shadow zone of P waves and S waves, which gives us an evidence that the outer core is liquid in nature. I hope this concept is very clear and you all understood the shadow zone and the characteristics of the waves. What, now, what you will do, you will read your books thoroughly and also you will follow the PDF that has been provided in the description box. If you have any suggestion or any problem, do comment in the comment box. I'm looking forward for your comments. If you like my video and you feel it's worth watching, do share it with your friends and don't forget to hit the like button. If you're new to my channel and you have not subscribed yet, do subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for further notifications of my upcoming videos. Stay tuned. I will be back soon with a new video on the topic of the types of earthquake. Till then, stay safe and take care. Thank you.